Hi there, my name's Matt Pepper. I'm a principal sales engineer based in the UK. I'm pre-recording this because my children keep stealing all my internet, but I am live, so if you want to ask any questions, please do in the chat. In this presentation and demo, I'm going to show you how I created this. An HTML5 web page with MicroStrategy dossiers embedded within it. Those dossiers can be a simple visualization. They can interact with the web page with these selectors, or it could be a full embedded version of MicroStrategy library. All of this is in a fully responsive format and therefore looks really, really good when you have a phone format. So how did I do this? Keep watching and find out. So who should watch this? Well, I'm going on the assumption that some of you have never seen any of our embedding capabilities before. So I'm going to do the basics. I'm going to show you how to connect, collect the object IDs, um, how to put it into a web page, and then how to switch things on and off. There are some more advanced sessions throughout this event, so keep an eye open for those. So this is the agenda. So first of all, I've already covered the who should watch this. I'm also going to then highlight why you should use MicroStrategy for embedding, because I think we've got some fantastic capabilities there. I'm actually going to use a business value from a customer use case that's actually used this embedding within the UK. And then going to show the sources of information where I actually built this website from. And then we're going to get into the code. So I'll show you those bits. And then right at the end, obviously the most important thing, which is licensing. Um, spoilers for this one, basically ask your account team if you have any further questions on that one. Okay then, so why MicroStrategy for Embedded? Well, it's not just us who think we've got a really strong product. The Critical Capabilities Report from Gartner, which comes out every year, is a really, really good article if you want to get into the weeds to find out what capabilities each product have. As you can see, MicroStrategy is number one and has been for the last few years when it comes to embedded analytics. We have got outstanding scores for many other areas, but for embedded in particular, we are number one and we're quite proud of that. One of the things I think that is most important is it's really, really easy to do. And that's my objective. My objective is to show you how easy it is to embed stuff. And it's not just the analysts. I have got a customer within the UK, a telecoms company, and they are using MicroStrategy embedding within a web page for product launches. So uh, the latest iPhone released, uh, Black Friday, Christmas sales, and the latest Samsung release. They actually think it's really, really powerful because you can combine dossiers from different projects. So you can get a 360 view of an actual product launch, whether that is supply chain, sales, stock, so that's, I think, is a really, really sensible and useful way of doing it. They've chose it over SharePoint because they did try to embed into SharePoint, but actually preferred the flexibility of having a whole HTML page. It does work in SharePoint. They just didn't like the look and feel of it as much. They've also hosted the web page within the MicroStrategy library URL. Therefore, all of the security and governance is still there. From feedback from the users, they actually really, really like it. They are looking at now expanding this into a home page and creating a real look and feel for their end users. And more importantly, all of the product launches, all of the PDFs and all of the extracts that the users are doing over the weekend, they've stopped doing it. They've stopped doing it because they see that this hosted web page has all the information they have, which is on a phone or on a tablet or on their web page whenever they need it. Onto the data sources. There are two key data sources that I want to reference here. First of them is the actual website itself. That is html5up.net. It's a free source of getting these websites. So if you just want to test the idea, it's a brilliant source of information and you can pick one of these and then change it into whatever you want. The second one is our MicroStrategy community SDK site. It's got some fantastic snippets, which you can copy and paste along with almost mini exercises, just so you can see if this works within your environment. Two key areas that I'd like to highlight on this in particular are 
the different types of authentication that are supported. So I'm going to just use standard authentication in my demo and also the different types of functionality that you can add to your application. So whether that is navigation or event handling or anything like filters, all of those things, including going into them, you will find code snippets within this page that shows you and steps you through all of the things you can do to apply these things. So those are the two key sources. However, if you also go to demo.microstrategy.com forward slash embedding forward slash index.html, you will be able to see and interact with this demo. Okay, let's get into the code. Now, if you download a website like I have from html5up.net, there is one web page that you need to change, which is the HTML here. And then there is a config.js, which you'll have to add. Now, obviously there are images and style sheets that you can change, but the, once again, this is me keeping things nice and simple. If I go to the config.js, what you'll see here is within it, there are the project IDs. These are the MicroStrategy projects. I've got the username and password because I'm doing standard authentication, but there are multiple methods of authentication to be used. Your web server, and then the actual dossier IDs themselves. Now, where do you get those IDs from? Well, you can either go for, to developer, or you can do it in web, or you can go to workstation. Now on workstation, if I wanted to get my UK demo project ID, I would right click and go to properties, drag it from my other screen, and then there is the project ID. To get a dossier, I would go into here and I will do a search for my mini embedded, which we're using. And then I can right click that. And once again, go to properties. And that's the dossier ID. So that is your first one. Now this index page here, if I make this full screen, I am not going into the entire web page itself. Um, I think it's really, really clever, but I am going to focus just purely on where the embedding stuff happens. And that's right at the end of this web page. So if I scroll down to about here, so this is first of all, the reference to the MicroStrategy embedding JS. So there's the JavaScript. That is then the config web server plus the library. So therefore what we're doing is creating the library URL. And then underneath these here are the actual project ID and the dossier ID. And what you do is you essentially combine all of those together to create the MicroStrategy library, project ID and dossier ID. So how does that render on the web page? Well, let's go back to the web page. Now let's have a look at this one here. So this visualization in library is one visualization. So this is it, it's called embedded mini two. This bit here is the actual uh, web website. There's the library piece that was on our code. And then this is the project code. And this is the dossier code or the IDs, should I say. This bit will come to in a bit, but that's actually the page. So basically what we're doing for every single visualization that's on this website is creating a string directly back to them. Now, something that's really, really cool is that because you've just now pointed straight to the library, any changes you do to that dossier will be automatically updated without having to compile code or anything else. I'll do a very simple example. I'm going to go to this dossier. I'm going to change the formatting and then we'll refresh and you'll be able to see it automatically updating in the web page. So here I am logging into web. And I am going to change the colors from orange and teal to 
gold and purple. I'll press save. And then I can go straight back to my web page and press refresh. And there you have it automatically updated. Now, if you change the visualization, it would automatically update as well. You could even repoint the dossier to a different dossier ID or a different projects and dossier combination. And once again, it would automatically refresh. That's what my UK telecoms company have done. And that means they've got a template or multiple templates. And all they need to do is just change the ID to a different dossier. It's a really, really simple and efficient way of embedding. So you can see all you need to do is create a string that points directly to the URL in library and then put it onto the web page and then it renders and you can make changes to that dossier and they will automatically be rendered within that web page. Brilliant. How do I now add or remove certain bits of functionality? Like do I fully embed library with the menu system, the filters, collaboration, or like the last one we've just seen, just have a visualization itself. Let's go back to the code. So for this, I'm going to put the code side by side with the actual visualizations. Now these visualizations here, this is dossier container one, which is here, or, and then this one's dossier container two, which is a bit further down. So we'll just focus on the first one. So that's this one here. This code is all of, is completely available on our website in the SDK, but you can see that dossier container one referenced, and then it's got customer authentication on, although I didn't actually need it for this one. I want to make it responsive. I've enabled the navigation bar to false. That means that you can't see anything around it. So that means the table of contents, the title, all of these options like resetting, prompting, they're all set to false. So nothing is there. So then all you get is just the visualization. Now, if I go a bit further down to the fully embedded, in fact, let's go down even further to the platform analytics one. So this one has got the table of contents. This one has got the bookmarks, it's got resets, it's got filters. So it's got pretty much nearly everything apart from collaboration. What I can then do is actually go down to dossier container four, which is the platform analytics one. Now on this one, I have actually enabled the navigation bar to true. So the go to library in the top left is not enabled, but the title and the table of contents, reset, all of these are set to true. But that's it, that's all you need to do. And you can copy and paste that for every single visualization you want. And then you can choose what things that you show and what things you don't show. Okay, two more pieces of code before we move on to the final part, which is licensing. So, okay, now we know how to create a string we know now how to turn things on and off, like the headers or the filters, but how do I actually place it on the web page? So if I now scroll up all the way here until we find the first dot, so I'll put this full screen and zoom in a bit here. In the code, there is something here which references dossier container one. That is all you need to do to place that in that a certain dossier within the web page. And the same here for dossier container two. It's within a div tag and that's it. It just needs to be referenced and it will be placed in there. The same here for my final piece, which is how to actually have navigation within the page. So this is dossier container three. I'll zoom back out again and then move that over. Now this one is slightly cleverer because actually here it's uh, my dev version. So it's slightly different to the one that you saw right at the beginning, but these here are images, but it can be text or whatever else. 
And each one of these here, if I go into full screen again and zoom in, this is using something called the navi navigate to page and then the get page by node key. Once again, all of this code is actually in our SDK site. Now, remember when I was showing you the string, there was that little bit on the end of the page. That's actually the page number here, right at the end, the page number of that dossier. So if your dossier has multiple pages, all you need to do is copy that last piece of the string and then paste it in here. So we've got four pages. And then all you do is reference it either with an image or with a piece of text. And then the whole string for dossier container three will then have the page right at the end. It's that simple. And then you can have something that looks really good and it interacts with the web page via an image or a piece of text. Finally, licensing. For what you've just seen using standard authentication, you should only need to have web access. So as long as you have access to library, you will be able to access this. So that's really, really powerful. And that's what the telecoms company I've been talking about. That's what they've done. If you have some custom authentication, then it's always, always worth asking your account team just to make sure that you are covered. In fact, to be honest, that's probably the best advice I could always tell you. Always ask your account team. We're always willing to help you out to make sure that you are covered from a licensing perspective. And there we have it. That was a whistle stop tour of how to embed MicroStrategy dossier through library into a web application. If you haven't already, please ask any questions in the chat. There are also lots of lounges and I'm sure you can ask some of our SDK specialists some more detailed things and look out for those other sessions as well that are being presented. Thank you very much for your time and I hope you enjoy the rest of the event.